Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Rohan Kanelwal, your Marrow SS General Surgery faculty. And it's an absolute honor to be introducing Dr. Hari to all of you. Dr. Hari has secured rank one in the recently conducted INI SS exam in the gastro surgery division. Now, gastro surgery is one of the toughest branches to crack in INI SS, and getting rank one is amazing. So, heartiest congratulations, uh, Dr. Hari, from the entire Marrow SS team. You've been our Marrow SS uh, user. Um, how does it feel like? Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it's such an honor to uh, meet you in such a meeting, sir. It's always been my dream to meet you sometime. And uh, it's such an honor to be sitting in front of you like this. I mean, the honor is all mine. I think so. You're such a humble person. There's so much to learn from uh, your journey and I'm sure people would, uh, you know, students who are preparing for future exams would uh, gain a lot yes. of insight from your preparation. Uh, yes. So Dr. Hari, you took up uh, Marrow SS uh, towards the end of your uh, residency at Stanley Medical College in Nai. Yes. Can you uh, run through the journey uh, with Marrow SS from there uh, regarding the videos? How did you go about the tests? Can you please uh, yes, elaborate on that? Yes, sir. So actually, I started watching the Marrow SS videos from last January of 2022, sir. Our exams were in June of 2022. So my only uh, idea was to finish the videos and get an idea about how uh, to prepare for SS. There were no proper guidance uh, from any other space other than Marrow at that point of time. So we, I just saw the videos and took notes of it because we used to read basic books like Bailey and Sebastian, but we really didn't know how to approach super specialty per se. So in that aspect, we, uh, me and a few friends of mine would just look at all the videos and take proper notes and read it and review on the textbooks if we have any doubts. So I completed all the video watching in a matter of one or two months. And then uh, I gave the April INIS sir. So this is all general surgery videos and specialty videos in two months you did? Uh, sir, I just, uh, yes, sir. I just uh, saw the videos in full day. I used to see videos and just take notes. And uh, towards the end of the day, I just read through the notes and uh, try to understand as much as I can. Uh, and I, I think so. There's no substitute to making your own notes. Once you make your own notes, uh, you retain them for a much longer period of time. So that's amazing. Yes, In two months, you saw all the general surgery and the specialty videos. Yes. That, that's something special. Yes. And if you don't have your notes, it puts us in a state of panic when we have to revise. Taking right. the textbooks at the last moment is like uh, panicking. And moreover, when you have your notes, uh, there's always a scope for uh, improving on your notes. You can add all the points that you come across from your Q bank or from your textbooks. And that kind of improves your idea about the content that you're reading. And stuff. So I did, I gave my INI in April. I qualified, but uh, I couldn't make it to the interview, sir. Uh, so I continued, I mean, I was, I didn't expect a qualification even, but I was happy that I qualified and I took it as a motivation and continued reading for my final exams. So I just followed the standard textbooks and I use my marrow notes. I used to revise my notes every two weeks. Mm -hmm. I used to read my textbooks for two weeks and for two, three days, I would revise all the notes uh, relating to the text that I have read. So whenever you used to read the textbook, you used to add extra points to your notes. Yes, sir. I used and to highlight them in my textbooks. And whenever mm -hmm. I look back on my notes, I would add the highlighted points to my notes. Sir. But, and this was all when you were in final year. So you even qualified for the yes. exam in final year, but weren't called for the yes. interview. So that's that's truly amazing. And uh, you sure. watched the gastro surgery uh, videos as well. Um, any yes, particular sir. faculty you would like to mention regarding their teaching, which uh, inspired you or motivated you to do better? Sir, I would say I had no idea about gastro surgery until I saw the videos, sir. Yeah, we had a posting, periphery posting for uh, 15 to 20 days. Uh, of course, my faculties guided me, but it was a very limited time during COVID. They couldn't give the proper content. So only my entire idea about gastro was from Marrow videos. I would, I would like to thank all the three faculties, sir, 
uh, Venkatesh sir, Samrat sir, and the Prasanna sir. Uh, each one has their own unique way of uh, handling things. Venkatesh sir's notes are like uh, top class, and uh, whatever we read, everything is in the notes. I don't yeah. think there's any much content to add to his notes. And Samrat sir has this unique way of approaching things through case scenarios and uh, more his voice and his discussion points is always retained more than his notes it's what he says that is retained for a longer time and prasanna sir has this way of handling everything with pictures so mm -hmm. whichever images he shows it it is retained for a very long time and i saw all your general surgery videos sir i used to see your videos during my pg prep also so it was like uh, reading the same uh, bailey and love for uh, surgical gastro it's Great. just like an upgraded version of uh, what we need to know as a surgeon and what we needed to know as an MBBS level. So it was very comfortable to upgrade on the ideas that you had already put in the head, sir. Yeah, so I mean, uh, it's actually very gratifying for me now. Uh, I'm seeing students whom I've taught as undergraduates who've cracked PG exams using those notes, uh, then upgraded them to MS notes cleared their MS exam and now the super speciality. So yes, there's nothing more gratifying yeah. for a teacher uh, than that. It's and just like you uh, just took it through the path, entire path, sir. It's such an amazing thing, sir. Thank you, sir. Perfect. No, you, you're more than welcome, I think. So it's it's uh, students like you who, um, you know, who motivate us to do even better and to put a bigger effort to uh, bring out better content. Uh, so, Dr. Hari, what about the test series uh, which we were running in Marrow, the tests which were being conducted? Did you regularly appear for the tests as well? Uh, sir, uh, uh, I was uh, only doing my final year and second year. That time, the mini test used to come in Marrow app. Mm -hmm. I That was my first entrance towards the SS preparation. They were all uh, uh, freely available at that point of time. So I used to right. give all the tests and that's when I got an interest to getting into Marrow for my preparation. And every tests in Marrow were uh, so uh, on point that uh, people, many people attended. So it was a very good assessment of our performance. At the same right. time, the questions had proper references, which we can anyway go and check on. They're not just copy pasted uh, answers, which we need to think from where they have uh, obtain this content. It was exactly they gave the entire article also. So we can very well go to the article and check. So it was very uh, standard. No, I completely agree. The MCQ team, the QBank team of Maro does an amazing job. And I think so they come out with the most authentic references. It's not as if, you know, it's just copy pasted. They really yes, do sir. research and uh, they also bother us too much. If we have said something in the videos and it is not matching with their research, they make us change everything. So, I mean, hats off to that team, uh, yes, which, is why, of course. which is why it has the most authentic uh, question bank uh, source. No, so sometimes I used to read the entire topic and then go back to the MCQ book. That would be something new to get out of the that particular Q bank. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Dr. Hari, uh, lots of students would be watching this interview. They would want to know uh, there are two paths which uh, an MS candidate can choose. They can either go down the NEAT SS part, which is predominantly a general surgery or exit based exam paper, and they can go down the INA SS part where it is partly general surgery and partly specialty. How is the preparation different for them? Because we have seen sometimes that somebody who's preparing for INA SS might not land up with a good rank for NEAT SS because you know they have a very uh, focused preparation, a kind of like a tunnel vision for that specialty. So what would be your tips uh, regarding this? Uh, so you are exactly right. They are totally different paths and we need to make a call when we start preparing. Uh, but we can start preparing with a basic mindset and even then take a call. It's not mandatory to take a call immediately. But uh, as you said, INSS is very tunneled, sir. If we go into reading gastro, it's very tough to get our head out of it and do plastic surgery and neurosurgery from the neat perspective. So it's initially, we need to make a proper idea on what to choose and what we want. If we make a choice, it's very easy to make a plan and go ahead with either uh, aspects of it. Sir. But we need to plan it, sir. We can't just uh, start our preparation 
and at the end we can't just crack both the exams in a go that's what so i feel sir it's difficult to sail in two boats you have to take a decision and choose one path and walk that path yes sir because i gave or i targeted inss i ultimately uh, ended up getting a very poor rank in neat which i was very shocked i thought i had uh, done my gender surgery properly but it was a real shock for me so uh, it's necessary to target a particular exam and keep working for it only sir yeah i mean that is what i tell so what i tell students is that if you have if you are very focused on one branch which you want to take up then you should uh, target more towards inss but there are a lot of candidates who are unsure about what specialty they want to do they basically decide once they get a rank so for them going down the neat ss path is a better option uh, and then choosing whatever rank they have and then they can choose what they want yes, uh, one more thing what i have noticed is that fresh pass outs they do well in neat ss because they are yes, a fresh with they have a broader knowledge base as compared to who's uh, preparing for one specialty yes sir exactly sir uh, the immediate uh, knowledge about ms exit level would help us in neat ss in an enormous way right. if you do a focus prep for iniss you are side by side doing an sr ship iniss would be a better option sir absolutely so as you rightly said one has to choose their path and then uh, walk on that path uh, approximately like you said you took one and a half years of preparation landed you rank one in aims so that is what yes, we sir. tell them a year to year yes, and a half of prep is required yes sir. and uh, in if supposing somebody is doing uh, preparing for neat ss using marrow you've been a marrow user so what yes, would be your tips uh, to them on utilizing the marrow videos for neat ss ah uh, yes sir so uh, neat ss is solely based on general surgery sir so we need to look at your videos entirely like there's no compromise on your videos we can't even skip one video of yours we we'll have to do all of your videos and take proper notes and then we have to look into videos of other specialties based on wherever we are weak if time is a concern if we have enough time we can take notes of every faculty and every specialty and read them selectively but if time is a concern we can build on wherever we are weak and entirely do your videos according to according to step 1 of acquiring content well, for test series uh, sir so qbank is amazing but i usually do all the grant tests only sir mm -hmm. a qbank i just do for areas where i feel i am very weak weak and i am very less confident uh, because grant tests give an entire holistic view of uh, what you have already read and what you have not read also so it gives us a stable assessment and also a good exam feeling and makes the exam pressure a bit less sir according right. to Absolutely. me so i also uh, tell this only that somebody who's taking marrow in second year or third year they should go through all the specialty videos because they have time and they can yes. make note but if yes. somebody has taken up marrow ss post passing ms then yes, watch the general surgery content and what selective yes. videos from every sub specialty that you yes, select this we made like you know there would be yes, management of stone disease which a urologist yes, would be able to cover in more depth and that's yes, important sir. so those yes, videos sir. can be watched from the specialty section yes sir perfect um somebody who is keen on uh, doing gastro surgery what are the standard textbooks they need to read during their ms preparation uh so during ms period it's mandatory to do bailey and law hmm. then for i would say it's in with respect to neat perspective i would say to do selective reading of sebastian and schwartz hmm uh, for sebastian we can we should read gi surgery cardiothoracic vascular and pediatric surgery and in schwartz you should read onco surgery trauma and uh, endocrine surgery hmm and uh, general surgery part uh, it's our preference if you have time we can read almost uh, all the three books because general surgery first 12 to 20 chapters of general surgery uh, they go in and out they try to assess our entire knowledge in general surgery so we have to read everything with respect to gastro surgery 
uh, i personally read shackle fort for uh, the november inis mm -hmm. but that was not adequate because they asked uh, 20 to 22 questions from bloom guard directly so then i read bloom guard so i feel uh, without bloom guard and shackle fort uh, it is not possible sir so you know some students just seeing the volume of the either uh, the thickness of these books yes, they get uh, scared yes sir. so is it yes, that sir. everything has to be read or you have to mark the previous year topics the selected topics and just read those topics from these uh, textbooks so as exactly you said uh, whenever i take those books to the library i used to be scared i was very scared to start reading only but uh, uh, as uh, when it is the only way I kind of convinced myself to read it. There are, um, Shackleford is uh, doable, sir. You can't read Shackleford entirely. But uh, Bloomgart is uh, very tough. So in Bloomgart, we can do selective reading of uh, very important topics because there are many content in between that is uh, kind of out of uh, focus. So in Bloomgart, we can do a selective reading, sir. Would you be able to tell some of those topics which are um, a must do from Bloomgard? So Bloomgard, uh, we can separate it into five parts, sir. In first part, it's the general hepatobiliary part. I would uh, suggest uh, everybody to read that part entirely. Even if they don't uh, uh, like retain it, reading it would give an entire idea on how to approach the other four parts. The second yeah. part would be biliary. Biliary, just the top important topics like gallstones, CBD stones, GB cancer. I think these three would be good enough, sir. Others we can just read through. The third would be pancreas. The pancreas is just solid uh, uh, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, cystic tumors of pancreas, and pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. Other acute pancreatitis and all, I think you can just read through. Uh, then hepato hepatic part, I think it's very important. They ask uh, cirrhosis, portal hypertension, and even the histopathology of cirrhosis, and uh, benign tumors of uh, benign space occupying lesions of liver. The malignant part is not, uh, we can just skip. As far as transplant is concerned, basic idea of transplant, either every solid organs, kidney, and everything should be read from other books, and just reference can be done from Bloomgard, sir. Okay. Others can be skipped. So I think so that is great insight, uh, uh, especially to somebody who is starting their preparation for gastro surgery. I think so you have highlighted your preparation so beautifully. You make it sound so simple because I think so you had a very uh, clear uh, thought process when you uh, went ahead with your preparation. So uh, thank you very much for uh, taking our time, Dr. Hari. It was uh, a pleasure to you. And we wish you all the very best uh, for your future. Do stay in touch. Uh, any parting comments or any parting uh, thoughts for uh, future aspirants? Sir, uh, my comments would be an immense thanks to everyone who have uh, directly and indirectly supported me. And I would like to especially thank uh, my teachers and you for unconditionally giving the knowledge that you have acquired all these time. Uh, for the future aspirants, I would say it is kind of tough post MS to decide what to do, how to plan and all with respect to family and uh, with respect to working and studying. So it's very important to make a list of priorities and plan exactly what you want and just trust in the process and not the results. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Hari. And thank you, you all the best for the future. Thank, thank you so you. much, sir. Thank you thank so you. much.